Keep your heads up and your arms covered, family. Here's the verse of the day for today, and it's Proverbs 28.1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. And we get that from the lion of the tribe of Judah, Yeshua, Hamashiach, also known as Jesus Christ. All right, family, let's get started with what's happening right now. And it's the epic alignment of five planets. This rare planetary parade has not been seen since 2004 and won't happen again like this until 2040. And we've been sharing this with you and watching it form. And right here on AccuWeather, it says a rare planetary alignment that won't occur again for nearly two decades has taken shape in the night sky. And this rare planetary alignment will remain visible through the end of June. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn have lined up in the early morning sky. A telescope is not required to see this month's unique grouping of planets. The parade of planets will be best seen about 45 to 60 minutes before sunrise. And remember, we just had our longest day on the solstice, so now the days will be shortened. These five planets will appear in a straight line across the sky. And the best time to see this is right now. And it says the crescent moon will fall in line perfectly with the planets before daybreak on Friday, June 24th, glowing directly between Mars and Venus with the moon in alignment. And I'll go over that with you in Stellarium in just a second, family. And it says as June comes to a close and the calendar flips to July, the planets will begin to space out with Mercury leaving the morning sky altogether. So it looks like this is our father announcing that Yeshua is coming to get us. And I'm feeling his Holy Spirit inside of me and outside of me. The Ruach HaKodesh, my hair standing straight up and I have the holy bumps. He's painting this picture. He's announcing his arrival. The planets are lined up. And it says right here, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn will not appear in this order again from the perspective of the Earth until August of 2040. This is the grand finale, showing the day of Yeshua approaching. Genesis 1.14 And our Father said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Luke 21, 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So if you get sidetracked and led down a rabbit hole or led on a wild goose chase, remember where Yeshua said the signs would be and get back on track. They're in the sun, they're in the moon and they're in the stars. And that's why this planetary parade that doesn't happen again until 2040 is gigantinormous. And I'll show you what it leads to. And as you can see in the top left-hand corner, the moon is lined up with what they call Jupiter. And on the bottom right, you can see what they call Saturn. And there's Mars right above. And there's Venus and there's Mercury and there's the sun. So we go back to the moon which is right next to Jupiter, right now, in 22 Kopf. And we'll go to June 24th, right where they say that the moon falls perfectly into place between Venus and Mars. And there it is. And on the 24th, you can see that it's right under and in the constellation that they call Aries. They call this the God of War. It's a false god. There's only one god. And it's Yeshua HaMashiach. And as you go through the days, and we'll move through the hours, you can see the moon is passing Pleiades on June 25th. And will be lined up with Venus. Headed towards Mercury. And by the 26th, the moon will be lined up with Mercury. And the next new moon is expected on June 29th. So we move to June 29th. And as you can see, the moon has passed the planets and the sun at this point on June 29th on the new moon. Now I'm going to show you something magnificent, gigantinormous, 
And I've went over this many times, but this year it's very special. And here's why. Because on 7 Savan, Moses went up the mountain. And we got a lot of comments saying it was like 666. Because 2022, when you add it up, it equals 6. But here's what's gigantinormous. On 17 Tammuz, the tablets were broken. And on the 18th of Tammuz, Moses burned the golden calf and judged the transgressors. Well, the 18th of Tammuz this year is 717. And you already know, in Strong's, it means to gather, to pluck. And Harmageddon. And in Hebrew, 717 is our father's name. It's appearing on the wall in Jerusalem. 717. And the following day, Tammuz 19, will be July 18th. And it'll be 717 here until 2 p.m. on the West Coast because Israel is 10 hours ahead of us. This is stacked, family. And even though he's showing us this next total blood moon eclipse three days before Cheshbon 17 when the flood started on November 8th, the national election day and more, and I'll get into that, even though he's showing us that, we can't limit our father. You can't put Yeshua in a box. But if we're still here, Tammuz 19 is when Moses went up for 40 days and pleaded for mercy. Then on one Elul, he went up to receive the second tablets and was there for 40 days. And Elul 1 this year just happens to be the four-year anniversary of the red heifer. The red heifers were born August 28th. 2018 and when they turn four years old they can't use them to sacrifice any longer if they turn four they're past the age and disqualified and they're keeping this real hush hush and secretive and there was only a couple hairs that were white that they were waiting to turn or fall out and remember they do this on the Mount of Olives. They sacrifice the red heifer on the Mount of Olives and they have to do this to start the daily sacrifices of the lambs because they don't believe in Yeshua. They don't believe that he was the final sacrifice. They don't believe that he was and is the one and only true lamb of our father, the lion. He's coming to get us with his holy angels. And we'll be meeting you in the air with them. We'll be caught up, harpazoed, raptured. All right, so you already know, Daniel 7, 25, the Antichrist shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. So first off, wait on Yeshua and he shall renew your strength. He shall mount you up on the wings of eagles. You shall run and not be weary. And you shall walk and not faint. And I'm feeling his Ruach HaKodesh again. All glory to you, Father. And the Antichrist shall think to change times. And there's multiple calendars and they're all different. So we go by the lights in the firmament of heaven. The sun, the moon, the stars. They're for the signs and seasons. And remember, it's written, it's Yeshua. He said the signs will be in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And if you didn't know, planets, before they were named planets, were originally called wandering stars. So the signs are in the moon. So I'll walk you through the days and we'll follow the moon. And again, the moon is lined up with what they call Jupiter right now. And tomorrow, 622, the moon will be lined up with what they call Mars. In 623, it'll be between Uranus and Mars. And on 624, it'll be lined up with Uranus. 625, when you go through the hours. The moon is completely lined up with Venus. And on 626, the moon is lined up with Mercury. It's going right through the planetary parade, family. Our Father is guiding us right to the rapture by the signs in the sun, his signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars.
And when you go to 627, 628, you can see that the moon is lined up with the sun. As it's approaching the new crescent moon, and if you didn't know, the moon moves all the way through the heavens in 30 days. So I'm going to walk you to 717, which remember is to move 1819. And right then, if we're still here on 717, 718, the moon is lined up with Jupiter, family. And the signs are in the sun. And on 717, this number that we've all been shown that means our father's name in Hebrew, the sun is lined up with Mercury. And this is where it all kicks off, family. And I've showed you this before. I've been tracking 666 Desdemona, like demon. And this asteroid that is 666 is lined up and in the mix with Mercury and the Sun and the asteroid Isis and Ceres. This is gigantinormous, family. These are the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars leading up to the rapture, to our escape, to our departure. And I'll bring you back to Stellarium right after this. This breaking news that came out that we posted yesterday in the community. It was on the Jerusalem Post. It was all over the internet. And it's right here. Israel heading to elections. Neset to disband. Lapid to become prime minister. We have a new prime minister of Israel family. He wasn't supposed to take over until Bennett had completed two years. But they're scared that Netanyahu is going to regain power, so they're trying to pull this power move. It says, Israel will be entering its fifth election in three and a half years. Imagine that, three and a half years could be a precursor. Looks like it is. After Prime Minister Bennett and alternate Prime Minister Lapid gave up Monday on their efforts to stabilize the coalition... In a joint statement, Bennett and Lapid said they would bring a bill to dissolve the Neset to a vote next Monday. There is a consensus in the coalition, an opposition on an October 25th date for election. Sources close to Bennett said the duo's goal was to initiate an election on their own terms and not be forced out by opposition leader Benjamin Netanyahu. There's so much to it, but I'm going to go over it real quick. According to the coalition agreement, Lapid will become caretaker prime minister until the election and until the new government takes power. Now let me remind you of Genesis 49.10. It says that Netanyahu took credit for the government's downfall and called it the worst government in the history of the state of Israel. And he vowed he would form the next government. And it's right here, family. If you search 2022 Israeli election date, here's what pops up. Early elections are thus likely to be held on either 25 October or 1 November. Well, here's why that's gigantinormous, family. There's many reasons, but I'll give you one right here. Whoever wins the election gets 14 days after the election to form a government. Last time, Netanyahu could not do it. So the president of Israel gave him another 14 days. He actually had 28 days and he couldn't do it. And then Bennett took over because he did form a government. And if you remember, the Israeli elections were held on March 23rd, 323. And we've been tracking this comment ever since. Because it never moved in history until this happened. And it never goes past the constellation they call Leo ever again. And on 717, it's right directly in the center of Precipe, the beehive cluster. And when you go to time and date calculator and you type in October 25th, when they're saying that the election's going to be held, and you add the 14 days that they get to form a government, no joke, family, it lands on November 8th. On November 8th is the second total blood moon eclipse of the year. That's three days before Cheshvan 17, the anniversary of when the flood started. And this year it's on 11-11. 
And on 11-8, the date that they'll have to form a government until is also our, America's, National Election Day. I'm feeling His Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, my hair standing straight up. He wants you to know these things. He wants you to keep watching and be sober and alert and repent and do the things that He said to do. That's why we're here. We're the body of Christ. It's our job to keep people from going to hell by preaching the gospel and leading them to Yeshua to be saved from hell. So real quick, back to Stellarium, I'll jump to the sun. And after this planetary parade, as you go through the days, you can see Mercury past the sun. The sun is on the heart of Regulus on the anniversary of gas, the great American solar eclipse. And as you keep going through the days, it starts approaching the woman and Mercury flips back around and passes the sun. And here's where it all cracks off, family. And it's right here, the end of the Shemitah, Rosh Hashanah, the Revelation 12 sign when the moon is under her feet and the woman is clothed with the sun. And as you can see, the planets are right behind the sun. And as you go through the days, you can see Venus is lined up with the sun on 1018. And on 1025, when they're talking about running this election in Israel, the moon is also lined up with the sun. Because there's a solar eclipse on that day, 1025, the day they're talking about doing the election, their fifth election. And it's right there, October 25th, partial solar eclipse, one fortnight before the November 8th total blood moon eclipse. And I've showed you this several times. That's when Mercury and the sun go into conjunction. You see right there? Here comes Mercury. It's the little circle. You zoom in, it's right there. The total blood moon eclipse starts on the 7th and runs through the 8th, right as the conjunction crosses the line, family. And remember our brother at Jesus Rules, he said, when you see the conjunction in the seventh house, know that I'm at the door. It's right here, family. 11-8. And while this is happening, this conjunction, the moon lines up with Uranus as it turns blood red the total blood red eclipse. And again, on 11-11, the moon is lined up in conjunction with Mars. On Cheshvan 17, the anniversary of the flood. Now back to the sun in the conjunction with Mercury. When you go to 11-11, you can see right there, Mercury passes the sun. And right on 11-11, The asteroid Babylon enters into the scale, the judgment scale, the altar, the house. And from my research, these houses don't become houses until the sun reaches them. And since my wife had this dream about no one could find 811, we've been tracking this asteroid named 811, Nahima. And it just happens to be in the scale on 11-8 which right to left is 811. And when you go through the days to 1111, right when Babylon is entering the scale, 811 Nahima is leaving the scale on 1111, the anniversary of the great flood. At the exact same time that the asteroid Babylon is entering the scale after three days after the conjunction, three days after the total blood moon eclipse, and so much more, family. And I'll wrap this up with Luke chapter 17. And when you eat verse 30, he tells you what it'll be like 
when the Son of Man is revealed. And when you back up, he says, people will be eating and drinking and getting married and buying and selling and planting and building. And those days are almost over, so we know he's coming. We know that when the last seven years of tribulation starts, people will stop building and planting and getting married. Israel will be trampled for 42 months. So when Yeshua comes to get us, we'll be eating and drinking and planting and building and getting married. And all glory to our Father in the name above every name, Yeshua HaMashiach, also known as Jesus Christ. When he's revealed, we will still be feeding the homeless and giving them drink and tents, tabernacles, booths. And we'll still be inviting them to the great wedding feast. And all glory to our Father for you, family, and Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you for helping our ministry. A couple weeks ago, we were able to order 48 more backpacks and they already came in. Then since our last video, we were able to order 48 more Bibles for them. New Testament, Hope Bibles. And as soon as we have the funds, all glory to our Father, I'm going to go shopping and get all the rest of the supplies, the socks and all the food and water and everything we need. And a gigant, enormous thank you for all you brothers and sisters that prayed for my wife, Christina. She is doing a little better. Her right leg and foot keep swelling up and it goes back down. I lay hands on her and pray over her multiple times a day and the swelling goes down then it wants to rise back up. It's Her leg has actually been twice the size of her other leg and she still hasn't had to go to the hospital. It's been very close, but we know it's because of your prayers and our faith has been keeping her from going to the hospital family. And we know the word and we know it's true and we know Yeshua will never lie and we're healed by his stripes. He heals all diseases, so we're not even sweating it. We know our name's written in the book of life, and we'll be with you and Yeshua for eternity. But again, I really highly appreciate and very grateful for all of your prayers, because there's times where Christina is suffering very badly. But it's almost over, and we're going home, so we'll see you in heaven, family. Keep your heads up and your arms covered.